Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. The radio for the Hoobsan X4 really eats through the batteries. You put like four AA batteries in here, and after you fly it just a few times, the batteries are dead. So uh, we've come up with a little mod for that, and that is to use a life battery. This is a Zippy 1100 milliamp hour life battery, and they're around 6.6 .6 volts, which is good for this radio, which needs about 6 volts. So we have to do a little adaption here. Okay, I'm going to take the screws out. Some of them are already out, I think. Yeah, they're, they're just falling out. I use this screwdriver to take them out these four holes here. These four holes take out the screws. All right. Now, get the top open. It comes off really easy. All right, now we got to get the battery box loose. And the way you do that is put something slender down in these holes. There's actually two tabs. And they're hard to see, but once you get this down in there, you can lift the battery box up like that. That's one. That's one side. Now there's another one right over here. Let me get some light here. There's another one right here. I'm using this popsicle stick because it's slender enough to go between the terminals. And that, once you do that, it comes right out. Now all we got to do is desolder these two wires and put some tape around them. Okay, now we're going to remove the wires and basically it's just a matter of getting these terminals here hot enough. And looks like the wires are on the bottom so I'm going to actually on the top so I'm heating that up there goes one I'm just putting a little tension on the wires and there's the other okay so just putting some electrical tape over these terminals because we're not going to be using them anymore so just taping them off oh there it is there we go this is like a production or assembly okay, line, so different people doing different jobs here. <laughs> okay, so that's that part Yeah. so right. far. So John's going to make the battery cable that has a diode underneath the white heat shrink shown here. I just put tape over the yellow wire in case you want to use it for something else later, like maybe have a second voltage or something. And then on the red we're going to put a diode. And I got one over here cut just a short length off of the uh, red wire and that we're going to put the diode between there and then have this on the board. The diode leads the diode leads are too long for this because we don't really need them to be that long. It would be a lot of wasted wire. So we need to cut them down the size before we solder it on. So we're just going to cut them off to where there's like only about a quarter inch hanging out. Or if you want to be metric, you can do 0.5 millimeters, close to the same. Just something rough like that. And the stripe goes towards the board. Now we're just going to solder it onto here. Don't worry if it blobs up because we're just going to be heat shrinking it later. Now we're going to do the same kind of soldering on the other wire here. So I'm going to be stripping both ends, but we're just going to do one end at a time. Just to make it simple. Didn't have enough solder to get it on there. Now, before we strip the end, let's put a piece of heat shrink over the diode. You can cut it with whatever, you know, pretty much. Including dikes. <laughs> and so you don't use the tip because it'll ruin the tip. You use the side. It'll dirty the side up, but that won't really matter. This is actually a nicer job than what I did from a dad's radio because we were still experimenting on his so 
ground are these two middle ones and voltage are these two outer ones so let's go ahead and solder on these these two wires here we're going to start with the black which is the ground stick it in there and do the same thing for the other one the one with the diode on it Okay, now, and you just unravel this a little bit and tuck it down in here like we like did the other ones. Now, so here's the thing. We don't have any way to do strain relief right here. So we're going to actually add a like kind of like a wedge of tape on there. Not what I wanted, but it'll work. So I wanted to have like another piece out here, but... Oh well. <laughs> Where did I put it? I made one of these on the 3D printer. It should be a good fit. Let's find out. Oh, I forgot that was still on there. That is actually a almost perfect fit the curve is not quite right but it'll slip in there hopefully it'll stay put and there's the battery. that's a tight fit too that's a good thing so and that just goes right there and then all that's left is to put the cover back on and screw it of course you could test it first if you wanted to put the battery on there and just Power it up, see if it all works. And okay, let's do that. Yeah. So here is your Zippy 1100 milliamp hour lithium ferrite. And it's about 6.6 .6 volts, which is good for this radio. And with the diode, that brings it down to 6 volts. So let's give it a test and see how it works. So it's going to sit right in this area. And then we're going to plug in the power. Now you can plug either one of these leads in. They're in parallel. This battery comes with two charge leads and one balance plug. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and plug it in. Now I think it'll only go in one way because it's keyed, but if you did get it the other way it wouldn't matter because the black wire just wouldn't go anywhere because this yellow wire is not connected here where it goes to the black. So anyway, we'll plug it in. There's also a diode in there so it won't let it go reversed anyway. Okay, let's see what it does. And there's the screen. It's trying to bind, so I'll just bypass the bind by pressing the record button. And, and there, full and we got a full battery charge. Mission accomplished. Now we just need to get it together. Okay, putting the cover back on. Oh, you got it wrong. I got it wrong. <laughs> got it right. There we go. Now it's in there. Okay, now we'll just put the four screws back in, but basically what you do is just slide your battery up in there and then plug it in like that. And then you tuck can just in all the tuck in the excess wires like so. And then let's put the cover back on it. Something in the way there. There it is. Now it's on there. Still lights up. Okay, now we'll put the screws in. You can use a five cell nickel metal high drive as well. Okay, so here goes the test. I'm Dave and that's Mike. And he's gonna test this quadcopter since it's really his. Battery installed, video comes up. Looks good. And it flies. Oh, it just went over the big quadcopter and it's going across the room. Ah! 
Oh, almost a catch, but pretty good. Also, I've changed my antenna arrangement. Uh, this is a, a different modification than I had the first time. You probably remember that I had the antenna on some tie wraps. I had a tie wrap coming down from the arm, and then the antenna just attached upside down with another tie wrap. Well, that came loose on me and caused me some trouble, so I've seen this mod done before, so I went to that, and I think it's actually easier to do this mod. So you just make a, a slit, a couple of slits here, and pull the antenna out, and then just hot melt it right there on the side of the quad. And that seems to work really good. So that's the way I'm going from now on. Keep your light.